Niagara Falls has long been considered one of nature's most majestic places. With its thundering waters and mysterious mists, the beauty of the falls is almost overwhelming. Each year it attracts millions of tourists from all walks of life. They come to bond with friends and family, to experience romance, and to appreciate the living world. But Niagara also has a long legacy of attracting thrill seekers. These daredevils would fearlessly perform death-defying acts with the hope of achieving glory. To some, these people were a testament to man's pioneering spirit. Individuals that laughed in the face of danger and showed everyone just how much one person is capable of. To others, they were full of thoughtless hubris, foolish mortals who believed they had the ability to conquer nature. As with mists of men raging against the gods, many of Niagara's daredevils forfeited their lives all in the pursuit of greatness. Still, there have been others who have taken the plunge, walked the tightrope, and come out the other side alive. In this series of videos, I seek to tell the stories of these adventurers. I aim to chronicle everything from their motivations to their tragedies. I hope you will enjoy the ride as we explore Niagara Falls Daredevils. Picture this. It's the mid-1800s and you are standing at the base of the Niagara Gorge. You pack yourself in next to other eager spectators. You've traveled a long way, and you're both excited and fearful of what today will bring. You were lost in your thoughts when an announcement is made that it is time for the show to start. The crowd falls silent as a man steps out onto a thin rope above you. He is so high in the air that it's difficult for you to get a good look at him. But from what you can see, he is blonde and chiseled like an angel. He begins to walk and you pray for his success, but also secretly long to watch him fall. He doesn't fall, though. Instead, he moves across the rope with all of the grace and poise of a ballet dancer. From the audience, there are gasps of awe. You think to yourself that you've never seen anything like it in your life, and you're sure you never will again. By envisioning this scenario, I have given you a taste of what it must have been like to be an audience member at one of the great Blondin's performances. Blondin born Jean-Francois Gravelet possessed a reckless spirit and natural ability from a young age. At five, he began training at an acrobatic school in Lyon, France. He excelled at his studies and was soon delighting audiences. Due to his glorious head of hair, he became known as the Great Blondin, he toured Europe and the United States before setting his sights on Niagara. In 1858, he came up with the idea to cross the gorge on a tightrope. One year later, he returned to make his dream a reality. On June 30th, 1859, he became the first person to undertake this dangerous feat. The rope was 1,100 feet in length and had a diameter of only three inches. Blondin refused to use a safety net, believing that taking such precautions would be begging for an accident. The masses huddled below and looked on in wonder and terror as the blonde Frenchman began his trip from the American side. Those hoping for a tragedy would be disappointed. Blondin walked the rope with ease, even pausing in the middle to enjoy a drink of wine. Then he continued his walk as if it were nothing. On his return from the Canadian side, he performed an even greater trick. He secured his 50-pound balancing pole to the tightrope and proceeded to take a picture of the crowd with a daguerreotype camera. The entire feat took only 23 minutes and garnered a lot of attention for Blondin. He repeated his act many times while always looking for new and unique ways to shake things up. Some of his most famous undertakings included walking the rope with his manager on his back, crossing on stilts, and pushing a wheelbarrow with a lion inside of it. One time Blondin even carried a stove out on the rope and cooked an omelet. He acquired a great deal of fame and fortune throughout his career, with people like President Millard Fillmore and the Prince of Wales coming to see his act. However, he also had his detractors. Mark Twain described Blondin as that adventurous ass while the New York Times condemned both Blondin and his audience. Blondin continued performing and touring into his 70s, with his last performance occurring in 1896. 
He passed away one year later from diabetes. He was 75 years old. Blondin is remembered as the greatest funambulist of the 19th century and continues to inspire daredevils to this day. In the words of his manager, Harry Colcord, had he lived a century or two earlier, he would have been treated as one possessed of a devil. He could walk the rope as a bird cleaves to air. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to hear more about Niagara Falls Daredevils, please leave a like and subscribe. My name is Lola Tarantula, and I will see you next time.